Hey guys, it's Short Devil here, and welcome to my bow tutorial. In this video, I will be talking about the mechanics of the weapon, combos, wire bug attacks, switch skills, and armor skills that I would recommend to use along with this weapon. For the beginning of the video, I will be using the base bow, meaning that I won't be touching on any of the switch skills until later on in the video. So, let's begin. Starting off with your mechanics, this weapon relies on being able to manage your stamina. Firing arrows and making use of the bow's evades will consume stamina. Obviously, when your stamina hits zero, you won't be able to dodge or fire any arrows. Bow users also have to maintain their distance and to keep constantly aiming at weak parts of a monster. Obviously, to make sure that you are getting the highest damage that you can get from attacking the monster. The bow also has a mechanic that the game does not tell you about, which is critical distance. By aiming with the bow, the reticle can change in three different ways. If you're too far from the monster, the reticle will tell you that you're out of range, meaning that you will not inflict any damage whatsoever. If you're extremely close to the monster, or if you're a distance away from the monster, the reticle will have a circle with a line and a dot. This means that you can hit the monster, but the damage won't be great. Finally, if you're just at the right distance, that's not too far or too close to the monster, the reticle will have two circles, meaning that you are now in critical distance. This is the best distance to damage the monster. Additionally, each bow has different kinds of charge shots, depending on the bow's charge level. Your shots might act differently compared to when you fire your first, second or third shots. You can either have spread, pierce or rapid shots. All three of these shots have different ranges and their own shot effect. Spread fires like a shotgun and has the shortest range. Piss penetrates through the monster and has the longest range. And rapid shots are your normal arrows and it has a medium range. Make sure to take a look at your bow to see what kind of shots the bow will be using. Basically, firing your arrows while making use of your evades, maintaining your distance and managing your stamina is needed when using this weapon. Now let's move on to your opening attacks. Present X allows you to draw your weapon. Nothing special here. However, if you were to jump off a ledge and press X, you'll perform the jumping melee attack. You can also add in an evade to do the charging sidestep. I'll talk about this move later on. Presses ZR allows you to instantly fire your bow in the direction that you're facing. This move is only good for a quick hit on the monster. However, you do need to position yourself correctly, otherwise you might just fire the bow completely away from the monster. There's not much when it comes to the bow's opening attacks. Before I actually move on to combos, I should mention on how to apply coatings to your arrows. While your weapon is out, press X will apply a coating to your arrows. And press X again removes the coating. By default, the close range coating will be applied, but you can apply other types of coatings if you have them in your inventory. If you want to select a different coating, you can hold down L and press X or B to scroll up and down the list of available coatings. Once you have selected a coating, let go of L and press X to apply the coating. You can tell if your coating is applied when you see the coating icon. Take note that out of all the coatings, the close range coating reduces your arrow's range. Other coatings do not affect the range of your shots. Now as I talk about your combos, I'm going to assume that you're holding ZL. Holding ZL allows you to aim. Obviously with a ranged weapon, you would want to be doing that when fighting any monster. If you're not holding ZL to aim, then there must be something wrong with you. Anyways, here's your combos. While aiming, pressing ZR three times will allow you to fire a volley of arrows, meaning that the second and third shot will be charged level two and three respectively. This is a good way to constantly damage the monster, but just be aware of the fact that firing arrows uses up stamina. You can also infinitely fire your arrows by constantly pressing ZR, as long as you have stamina. Just know that after the third shot, the next shot will be reset to a level 1 charge shot. You can also hold ZR to charge up your bow so that you can reach the highest charge level, but your damage per second or DPS will become extremely low. This just means that it's much better to spam your shots rather than waiting to fully charge your shot every time. However, there is only one reason why you might want to charge up your shot like this, but I'll talk about that later. Present A two times performs two melee attacks. This is a move that you don't use a lot, but it is there in case you need to hit something in front of you. 
However, if you were to firstly fire an arrow using ZR and then press A two more times, you will perform the power shot and volley attacks. A great way of making use of this attack is to press ZR three times and then perform the power shot and volley attacks. That way you'll be able to maximize your damage because after firing the first three shots, any attack that comes after will be your bow's highest charge shot level. This just means that your power shot and volley attacks will be at level 3 when performing those attacks this way. If you were to only fire one shot and then do the power shot and volley attacks, the power shot will be at level 2 and power volley will be at level 3. Pressing X and A will allow you to do the dragon piercer. This attack pierces through the monster, dealing multiple hits. This move is really great for waking up a monster since you get bonus damage when doing wake up attacks. Additionally, this move is affected by the charge level of your bow. So if a monster is sleeping, all you gotta do is charge up your attack and then press X and A for a strong dragon piercer. This might be the only reason why you might want to charge up your shot in this way. While you're still aiming, when you input a direction using the left stick and press B, you will perform the charging sidestep. This helps with both evading and instantly charging up your next shot to the next level. This move drains stamina just like when you normally evade, and it can allow you to move left, right, forwards or backwards from where you're facing. You can even use this move to perform the power shot and volley attacks rather than firing a shot beforehand. The charge and sidestep can be used at any time and can perform infinite combos, meaning that you can either start, place in between, or end your combos with the charge and sidestep to loop back into any combo. However, the infinite combo relies on your stamina bar. Once your stamina runs out, you won't be able to perform the infinite combos. You can either max out your stamina bar by using items like rations and drinking dash juice to reduce stamina depletion for a short time or make sure that you have skills to reduce the amount of stamina being drained for you to constantly damage the monster. I'll obviously talk about those skills later in the video. An amazing way to make use of the charge and sidestep is after pressing ZR three times and firing the power shot and volley attacks, add in the sidestep and quickly press ZR and then A. You can even sneak in a power volley if you want more damage. Or you can press ZR twice then perform the sidestep and quickly press ZR and then A. After that, just loop in between your charge and sidestep and then continue attacking the monster by pressing ZR once and fire a power shot again. Obviously, when your stamina has run out, then you won't be able to perform this infinite combo. The reason why this move is really good is because while you're doing this loop, your shots will always be on the highest charge level, meaning that your damage output will be quite high but at the cost of your stamina being depleted. Another thing to take note of the charge and sidestep, if you were to do two charge and sidesteps and hold ZR, you can decide on when to let go of ZR to fire your max charge arrows. This is pretty much the same concept as if you were to initially hold down ZR to the max charge. This can also help with repositioning yourself or even to make sure that your dragon piercer is at max charge before firing your shot. The bow also comes with a move for providing buffs for both yourself and other players, which is called the arc shot. Pressing ZR and A will perform this move, but doing it this way will only fire the arc shot in front of you. Now if you were to hold ZR and A while you're still aiming, you'll be able to choose where to fire your shot by moving the left stick. The arc shot buff is dependent on your bow. You can either have recovery, which gradually heals you, affinity, which increases your affinity, and Brace, which negates knockback. All three of these buffs will only last for a short duration. In my opinion, the arc shot is not worth doing, except maybe the recovery one. That's pretty much it in terms of combos, although I do pretty much highlight the attacks. Let's talk about your wirebug attacks. Present R and X will perform the focus shot, costing one wirebug. This move launches you away from the direction you're facing, and it can be used to dodge monsters' attacks. While your character is in the crouching position, your stamina will recharge at a faster rate. You must not move, otherwise you lose out on the fast stamina regen. Pressing R and A will do the Herculean draw, costing two wire bucks. This moves you forward in the direction you are facing, and it increases your attack for a short duration. This move is just good for increasing your attack, and if you need to move yourself in a direction for whatever reason. 
Yes, all your wirebug moves. Unlike the other weapons, accessing your wirebug moves is done by pressing R instead of ZL. That's only because ZL is used for aiming your bow. This means that you cannot sheath your bow by using the R button. Instead, you can only sheath the bow by pressing Y. Other than that, there's nothing really special that you can do with these, so let's move on to your switch skills. Slot 1 gives you Absolute Power Shot. This replaces your Power Shot attacks. The Absolute Power Shots use up more stamina than the regular Power Shots, but it has the potential to stun monsters. Meaning that if you constantly aim at the head of the monster while performing Absolute Power Shots, you can knock out the monster. Slot 2 gives you the Dodge Bolt. This replaces your charges sidestep. Evading with a skill on will allow you to damage the monster. Obviously, you have to be close to the monster to deal the damage. If you're able to dodge at the right time past a monster's attack, you'll be able to instantly max out the bow charge level. However, if you're just spamming this evade without dodging a monster's attack, you will not increase the bow's charge level. So keep in mind that this evade acts very differently compared to the charging sidestep, where every time you perform an evade, it will charge a shot. Lastly, the third slot gives you the aerial aim move, costing one wirebug. This replaces your focus shot wirebug move. This launches you in the air and it automatically fires a shot. You can fire two more shots using ZR as well. You can also press X after to perform an aerial diving melee attack. A notable thing about this attack is if you have absolute power shot in your first switch skill slot, your aerial aim attacks will have stun damage. Those are your switch skills. Now, which of these switch skills would I recommend? Again, let me just say that all of these skills can be used. There is no set skill that you should be going for. All of these skills can be used to suit your playstyle. Personally, for the first slot, I would have to go for the absolute power shot. This is because you can rack up stun damage to eventually knock out the monster. Even though this does reduce your stamina quite a bit, there are skills that you can use to reduce the amount that is being drained. However, if you're a person that is not used to stamina management, then use the normal power shot. In slot 2, I would have to go for the charging sidestep. The dodge bolt is really cool, but you lose out on the infinite combo that keeps your bow on the max charge level. Also, the dodge bolt is only effective when you dodge a monster's attack. Or unless you tend to just dodge around the monster and deal damage in that way, then you can go for the dodge bolt. Lastly, slot 3 would have to be Aerial Aim. Focus Shot doesn't really matter when you have skills that can help regain stamina faster, and Aerial Aim actually deals damage unlike the Focus Shot. Also, Aerial Aim gets bonus points for just looking cool. Finally, we have the skills that I would recommend to use along with this weapon. Again, for those that have not seen my previous tutorial, I will only be looking at skills that can only affect the weapon. Meaning that I won't be mentioning any skills that would increase your attack, like attack boost. For sure, you need to have constitution. This skill reduces the amount of stamina being depleted when doing certain actions, like evading and firing arrows. This is extremely useful for doing the infinite combo that I mentioned. Stamina Surge is good for quickly getting back stamina. Definitely great for bow users to quickly get back into battle. Evade Window and or Extender is extremely useful for making distance from the monster. It can also help with the Dodge Bolt skill because it can be quite difficult to time your dodge with the monster's attack. Additionally, your dodge distance will be increased with the Extender. You can also use Slugger if you really want to stun the monster like crazy, but this can only work with the Absolute Power Shot. There's also the skills that can increase the damage of your arrow shot types. The normal slash rapid, pierce, and spread up skills can help you out with that. Although I would say it might be a waste of skill space since there are better skills that you can use. Finally, there is the bow charge plus skill, which increases your max bow charge level by one. This means that you can gain access to the level four charge shot. However, as of the time of me recording this video, there's only one armor piece that can give you the skill. That's pretty much it for the bow. The bow is extremely fun to use, especially the aerial A move. I love it. If I missed out on anything, be sure to drop it in the comments below. I'm sure it would help someone out. If you also found the video useful in some way, give it a like and subscribe to the channel for more Rise content to come. 
You should also follow me on my Twitch where I play a variety of games there and you can chat to me live. Link is down in the description box below. Finally, be sure to also check me out on Twitter for any other channel updates. Thank you guys for watching and I shall see you guys later. And he's gone. Oh, he's not. He's not gone. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> no, <laughs> I just wanted to. <laughs> I wanted to dodge, but I don't know where he's coming from. What the heck? <laughs> <laughs>